there were some nervous moments against Ohio State. I think we can pick out about five, six moments in the fourth quarter and say, well, if that would have gone that way, I don't know if Georgia would have been able to pull that one out. But uh, to their credit, down yeah. 14 in the fourth quarter, they got it done. Uh, yeah, you can say, you know, a lot of people I know are pointing out, uh, you know, that, you know, Marvin Harrison, you know, Jr. goes out with a, you know, concussion. Uh, people like to point that one out, but whereas, you know, same thing, same time, George had players that was missing too. So I don't know if I put quite as much stock in that one as others do. But, <clears throat> but no doubt, Ohio State uh, was just fantastic. C.J. Stroud, that was as good of a, a performance by a quarterback in a game that I've personally seen in, in a long time. And, uh, in fact, the game itself was one of the best Georgia games that I've – hate to say maybe uh, best I've seen as far as excitement goes in 25 years of covering the, the team, but it may well have been. I mean, the uh, you know, the, the uh, 2018 Rose Bowl against Oklahoma where Georgia won in overtime, that was exciting. You know, it was – you know, I'm sure the uh, – advertisers got their money's worth from but that game was like back and forth back and forth this game georgia was down 14 points entering the fourth quarter and it until that time re really had not shown much signs of uh you know being able to, to pull that one out but you know despite struggling i mean the team didn't play his best game stetson bennett had not played his best game but when that fourth quarter rolled around something clicked and uh and then at the very end how they misses a 50 yard field goal and Georgia's now going back to the national championship with a chance to defend his title from a kicker who hit a 48 yard field goal just uh yeah a, a few minutes earlier so yeah. it was certainly possible and not necessarily out sure. of his range although not the best yeah. circumstance for Ohio State uh in terms of trying a 50 yarder under those circumstances mm-hmm we got yeah, Anthony no Dasher here from UGA sports.com to break down uh, Georgia and TCU, but uh, a lot to unpack with this uh, a game against Ohio State that was quite the thriller. Uh, you mentioned the injuries on the Ohio State side. They mm -hmm. lost a couple running backs earlier in the year. Uh, their tight end left the game as well, Cade Stover. Mm -hmm. We could go down uh, maybe some more from a national standpoint, more publicized injuries. However, Beyond Darnell Washington, who left the game and, of course, is one of the better tight ends, for both from a pass-catching standpoint but more from a blocking standpoint, tight ends in the nation. Nolan Smith is standing on the sideline. Can you give us an idea for some of those people? And, and this the yeah. injury situation always works for whatever fan base you are. If you're on the yeah. Ohio State side, you're going to emphasize the guys that they were missing. Georgia side's going to do the same. But uh, Nolan Smith standing on the sideline. Uh, give us an idea where Georgia stands versus what they would have been fully healthy. Well, Georgia didn't have a starting right tackle, Ward McClendon, who uh, you know some some folks had had him voted as a All SEC this year. You know, they, of course, no, not saying that Georgia is lacking talent because they just plug in, you know, a Marius Mims, who's uh, you know he's six foot seven, three hundred twenty five pounds, and maybe one of the best sophomore linemen in the country. But still, you're talking about a guy who has been the leader of the offensive line the entire season. And uh, he just brings a brings a lot to the table. Then Lad McConkey and Lad McConkey, uh, although he played, he was he was probably about eighty percent after you know injuring his knee against LSU, you know, in the SEC title game, you know, a, a few weeks uh, back. They uh, had been missing running back Andrew Paul all year long. Andrew was a true freshman, supposed to come in this year and have a big impact. He did not. He was not obviously available after tearing his, his ACL. They've had other wide receivers. They you know they they just now getting uh, you know Eddie Mitchell, but Eddie Mitchell played and caught a touchdown, but he was not 100%. So, I mean, it, 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 every team's got injuries this time of year. So, that's why I just I, – I don't – when I hear people say, well, so-and-so would have been healthy for Ohio State, they would have definitely won the ball game. I don't necessarily buy that because this time of year, everybody's got somebody hurt. Everybody has somebody who is not at his best at this time of year. So, you know, I don't – I know why people like to say that, but I don't think it's necessarily true as far as, you know, how this game ultimately turned out. Yeah, and absolutely just a phenomenal game and everything we hoped for for anybody who wasn't rooting for one of the two teams just in terms of having two of the top three most talented teams in the country playing not necessarily a mistake-free game. I don't want to say no, that because no, there are all sorts of mistakes all over, but just yeah. an exciting down to the wire, a lot of athleticism on display, just two tremendous football teams, and Georgia gets it done. Uh from a defensive standpoint, so we know that Ohio State's going to roll out about as good an offense, especially in the passing game, 
And, and that's just not weapons. That's pass protection as well was extremely yeah. good in this game yes, than, than anybody in the country. But coming off the LSU SEC championship game and some of the things we talked about and some of the questions about Georgia's pass defense, mm -hmm. uh, how do you rate, consider, analyze what they do in the secondary and uh, the absence of a pass rush in, for most of this game? Yeah, Georgia had, did, did have four sacks, but that was really – but other, otherwise, no, Stroud was not really, you know, pressured too much. He had plenty of time to sit back in that pocket and make plays. And those receivers they have are just so good. It just, it just you know, gives Stroud some time. They're going to get open one way or the other. And, and we saw some just tremendous plays by those guys. And although, again, there were some mistakes by George, but, I, again, same time, same time, I don't want to take anything away from – you know, what we saw from the Buckeye, you know, wide receivers who were just, you know, tremendous. I mean, Harrison was as, again, good as I've seen in a long, long time. This guy's going to make a, a ton of money in the NFL coming up here, you know, starting here, you know, very soon. But, but that, but, you know, the secondary is, I think, a little bit of a concern. There's two games in a row now where Georgia's given up a bunch of passing yards, you know, and, 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 and here comes TCU with uh, the quarterback, Max Duggan, who was a, Finished second in the Heisman Trophy voting this past year, and and Max is a is a more adept runner, uh, can get things done on the ground a lot better. So that's going to be another challenge for Georgia's defense, and that could make him even more dangerous in the passing game. Because again, if you're Georgia, do you do you, do you spy him? Do you do you blitz him? If you if you blitz him, then somebody's going to be wide open again, perhaps. And, uh, and with Georgia struggles, I know that's going to be a big concern.